No, no, I Nash is Nash and Nate is Nate. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Montgomery, Alabama, Riverfront Brawl PR. Live and in public, if you will, on this week's episode of The Shoes Fit, a show where you solve salacious situations by stepping the shoes of the shaken, the chagrined, the kerfuffed. I'm your host, Lexi Old, author. Oh, Lord. Seven secret ah. sources. A brawl on my mic. Seven yeah. secret sources inspiration. A snappy guy for creative procrastinators. And joining me, guest Kid Nate. Coming in, swooping in. I would say Captain Save a Hope, but he's Captain Save a Bro. Uh, from Bloody Elbow and Eugene S. Robinson, author of the upcoming memoir, A Walk Across Dirty Water and Straight into Murderer's Row, collectively the Pancho Days. Pancholi, 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 Pancholi. Now, uh, we probably aren't going to have the crowd that we normally have uh, because this was, uh, you know, John Nash had an emergency and Nate had to swoop uh. in. Swoop in literally what 15 minutes ago, Nate? Something like that. Is, is, You're it, very is, it, an emerg is it an emergency when the 7 Eleven runs out of those little powdered donuts? <laughs> I think that's, I mean, that's what he told me he was gonna do, so I don't know. Oh, lord, depending on what uh, how the donuts powdered, I guess. Yeah, uh, what, what they're powdered with, yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a little abbreviated show, but we got to do it anyway. So uh, let's get to Step and Eugene. Sir. Step in the shoes of a Montgomery, Alabama riverfront brawl participant. You were recorded <laughs> participating in a violent, oh, viral brawl last weekend, which inspired memes, multiple angle replays, and Jason Aldean lyrical interpolation. Walk us through your PR options and wake this wildness live and in public if you will. It's got to be, look, you know, they're, 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 it's got to be, I have to talk to somebody from the South, Nate. Uh, it's got to, doesn't it, like, don't you feel like slightly chagrined when Southerners just go Southern? Doesn't it like drive, <laughs> like it's like, you know, secretly in the back of your head, you're sitting there going, God damn it couldn't you for five minutes just not go southern uh you know i mean it's like uh it, it's gotta be it's gotta be maddening to a certain degree like that barry sobel the comedian did that great routine about how like if you're mexican you can't be the lazy mexican guy right you know, mm. you know the black guy you just can't and then when the southerners just come out and go southern on the one hand it's super refreshing for somebody like me from new york on the other hand you know i i it's even more refreshing when I imagine the chagrin that people from the South must feel when they just go, oh, God. In terms of, they've already done it. The people who perpetrated, who initiated the fight. Um, now, I at first thought, well, this, is, this guy has got some Hollywood makeup on. It's a rig. It's a work. He's apologizing, you know, just... It, but it dawned on me that nobody at his house has got that quality of kind of Hollywood makeup. So I've come to the conclusion that it was really the guy, you can see it in the crime faces take, who goes like, who knew that a 65 year old, the rent the cop could swing it. And he's got black eyes and he's got his faces all messed up. And as far as I'm concerned, you gotta deal with the courts. That's the way to own it. There's no explanation, no explanation give. I mean, we all know the reason it's like, if you're on a boat, you've been on that boat the whole day, being on a boat's a drag, unless you're drinking and drugging, mm. and then it's really fun. You pull in from a day of drinking and drugging, they ask you to move, you're like, ah, go fuck yourself. And next thing you know, you're swinging. How do you own it? Saying, hey, who knew a 65 year old could, could swing it, and then you got the bruises on your face, and nobody is saying it's racial. Nobody doesn't believe it's not racial. <laughs> But nobody's saying it's racial. Right now, the guys owned it. Southerners are being Southerners. And we could all go into tomorrow with a nice, happy laugh at the guy who jumped off the boat and swam across. The hero of the Aquaman. Day. Like, like AC said, you know, the only black man in America to swim to a fight. So uh, uh, I, I, think, I think this is an, uh, if you're smart, you stop talking about it. You're looking at a misdemeanor charge. Take your lumps like a man and move into a future of not beating up old security guards anymore. Mm. What's your take, Nate? 
Well, first off, I'm not a deep southerner. This is the deep south. This is Montgomery, Alabama. This is right. way capital right. of, the, of, of the slaveocracy. Like, I'm from West Texas. We never had slavery in West Texas. So this is this is not not my people. I hate these fucks. I've never claimed them. have nothing to do with them. All right? I've got ancestors that, you know, were in the Confederacy and the Klan and all that shit. Whatever. Fuck but those all are those good dead white people. people. How let, let's do the air quotes. Ancestors. <laughs> he really means him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alas, alas, alack, I do not. But uh, this kind of cracker deep south behavior is alien and loathsome to me. And the people, the fine owners of Vassar's Mini Mart, have apparently already shut down their business. Like, dude comes out, puts out a statement. I was trying to run away. First, I tried to stop the fight, and then I just ran away, and I wasn't arrested because uh, I was innocent. And then later, he was arrested. And then the Facebook page of Vassar's Mini Mart, the business that he owns, before it was shut down, was like, you know, on the one hand, trying to say, hey, we weren't. And then I've fought gorillas before. I mean, just like, just going oh. straight, straight, straight racist. Like, oh. you know, just, just, yeah, these are. I hadn't seen this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Google Vassar's Mini Mart and, and read the fun. They mishandled the PR. They mishandled the whole fucking thing anyway. When the, secu- when the boat captain pulls up and says, hey, we need to dock the much larger boat full of other people, mm. move your fucking boat. Like, yep. how hard can it be to move the boat? But apparently, if you're white people from Montgomery, Alabama, you don't acknowledge that black people are people, so you and did they, did, you know, they, did, they, did they give an explanation as to why they didn't move the boat so far i didn't see no, there's been no i didn't uh, see anything just drunk and stupid it. and racist and entitled mm. as far and as allegedly, i can tell um they had stolen a cart that was used to uh take handicapped people from the boat to the parking lot so the um one of the ca- a captain on the riverfront said, yeah, we know those guys and this is what they did before. You know, that was a prank, but still we've never seen anything like this. So, you know, we already have, you know, that other yeah, mark. Yeah. 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 And classic coward bullshit, you know, jump an old man with five on one or whatever it was. And then, and then, you know, get all crucial when the karma comes swimming across the dock at you. Well, speaking of swimming across the dock, so in terms of advice to be given, not just for since you gave it to the 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 perpetrators, I didn't give uh, any advice to those dumb fucks. Well, so but. then, what advice do you have for uh, Michael B. Phelps, for Aquaman, for uh, he seems uh, like he's doing just fine. Like he's Scuba Gooden Jr. Like I would, he has Air, a couple Air, of already. Aaron. My advice to his parents would be limit his social media exposure. Don't let him get involved with any shady business guys who want to try to capitalize on his celebrity. Just send him back to school and keep this on the QT. Like, do not try to make a career out of this or, you know, like, don't. No more media for 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 a kid. Like, he's mm-hmm. only 16. Like, yeah. he needs to just, yeah. you know, he, he did the right thing. I mean, you know. And and was and it, it worked it worked out well. I mean, I did the I did the a similar thing at the age of seventeen and ended up in the hospital. So, with my ear hanging off. <laughs> so you know, you got to pick your pick your fights, I guess. Do you think? The, what about the riverfront itself? Like, is it what kind of? Is there any kind of? Is it business as usual for them? They just keep quiet and they know that it, it's going to be a. Uh, no, I think they ride with it. I mean, or... Montgomery's got a black mayor. You know, it's a black majority city. Just, just embrace black Twitter and go with it. Like, you know, like, I mean, I don't know how powerful and mighty the family that controlled Vassar's Mini Mart is, but it seems like the city can roll right over them and. And, and, now, and just now, now, now that I know they're unrepentant, it makes me wish that somebody had been shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have ruined. That would have made it a much less fun story. It almost got yeah. unfun when the dude hit the woman with the folded chair, but she did have it coming, and she did walk away in handcuffs. So you know, yep. and that I, was I, a change. I, I, I like AC's, yeah. t- AC's take on it, Uncle Jeff. I don't know. You can't take him anywhere. He, look at that lunatic. <laughs> that was very. 
very pleased that he he his his gender radar was off a little bit. I guess he was just excited for being on a boat, you know. So, man, could have been, could have been. Yeah. It's really excitement. Nate stepping the shoes of Nate Diaz mm. after receiving an eight-figure payday allegedly for your fight against Jake Paul, which people said you'd be knocked out, but you weren't knocked down, but not knocked out. Walk us through your next options. I mean, I'd be hiring an accountant to check on my accountant is what I would be doing. Like mm. uh, you get a windfall like that, shut down the parties and start counting the money, kick the friends out of the house and, 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 you know, get a decent investment plan and, and try to stick with it. Like that's what I would do if I was Nate and look for his next fight. I mean, I was entertained by that thing. It, it, you know, it was a mismatch. They shouldn't have been fighting with that size differential. Nate obviously really had no chance because he had no, he didn't have the punching power to hurt, to hurt Paul. And he didn't have the boxing skills, but an MMA fight, I think they could be quite competitive and I'd like to see that. So I was entertained. It was way better than that terrible UFC show that Dana White walked out on. I mean, you know, so here's a celebrity boxing. I, I, I say Nate milks it as much as he can. And, you know, he already cashed in nicely, but why not take that 10 million offer and, and fight Jake Paul again? But, hmm. And if he doesn't go for it, fight him again in the boxing or MMA, either one. M, that was MMA. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any more. I don't, I wouldn't do the boxing thing again. I don't think there's any point in that. Like, hmm. you know, I, I think we've seen that, that Paul's probably going to win that 99 out of a hundred times just because of his size and skill differential. I mean, Is there another opponent though? You think before going to Eugene, is there another op opponent? If he wanted to, if he's for Nate, to do the M for Nate. So if he wanted to do MMA and Jake Paul's like, nah, bro, let's do boxing. And he's like, yeah, no, like who? Well, Jake's the one pushing for MMA. But if he wanted to do another boxing, I mean, Logan Paul smaller and I think might be a more competitive fight. Mm. You know, I think Logan Paul just signed to fight Dylan Dennis in a yeah. boxing match. So, <laughs> oh, bro, yeah. I'm glad you could feel positive about it. I I'm just sitting here thinking about. Uh, using dragging out my actuarial tables, what could I have spent sixty dollars on? Yeah, you know, there's certain parts. Of I didn't spend sixty dollars on it. That's yeah. oh. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you watch it, Nate? Huh? How did we watch uh -huh. it? And just trade secrets. We went uh, from I to we. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, you're talking about the coffers of others, Eugene. Yeah, it's, it's quite well, a different know, proposition. Yeah, hey, yeah. Man, man, listen, I paid to watch it because, you know, Nate, and I, I keep thinking, you know, there are places in America where people would have sex with me for $60, and here all I got was this fight. Man, I... It made me angry, man. Not point? because I not not because I thought I was tricked. In other words, it was like I knew what it was gonna be. Mm. I paid, and when it was what I knew it was gonna be, it was even worse than what I knew it was gonna be. And I'm out of sixty bucks. When did you know it was, yeah. it was what you gonna what it was gonna be? When first you know round. Oh. First round. You didn't. You weren't so, excited and, and when after, Nate makes his comeback or survives after, the the first and the fifth. And a, after that, I thought Nate showed a lot of heart and skill. After that, I was hate watching. L listen, listen. He doesn't have any interest nor aspiration to move anywhere other than two hundred nine. I was happy for him because you know how that, how much that money, how far that money goes in Lodi or Tracy or Stockton or or nearby environs. That's it. He's done. He's done. Live the rest of his life comfortably there. It, because he can stand to live there, he could probably live anywhere, but he chooses to live there. That's fine. His days are full of opening up at a school where apparently they like to spend most of their time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are known associates of mine. So I was happy from that point of view, but it just, it's uh, its Paul who kind of irked me. And I, I like that he's been a, a stone in the shoe of the bald one. That much makes me pretty happy, but it's just, it, there was something kind of, feverishly desperate about about paul I, I didn't get the sense that i was watching a boxer i got the sense that i was i felt like i was watching carlos watson you know a desperate a desperate entrepreneur out to kind of sell something to somebody and it just, and the fact that he it, won and was never in uh, a, a threatened 
seriously. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. Well, he yeah. picked his opponent very carefully. No, for I'm saying that. that. Reason. When, but once yeah. you realize it's like, oh, this is Carlos Watson. It's like, it's not like, for instance, an Nganu Fury where it's like, okay, there's yeah. there's a punching chance possibly yeah, yeah. that something yeah, could happen. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no. And then the commentators were all in and they're like, oh, you're Nate's a volume guy. Oh, he's endurance. And later rounds, it's like, oh, man. You know, he did I'm get stronger as the rounds went on, though. I mean, that I is mean, true. That he, is true. He was, he was, and he was landed his best yeah, shots. Yeah, and, you, and you know what? That's precisely what I would say if I didn't have that $60 to think about. Mm. Well, that was your decision to spend $60. I, I, I could have probably I, I, helped I you try, avoid I, that I, mistake. So I'm trying, talk to your I'm friends to, next I, time. Hey, I'm trying to help the home team. Also, a friend of Knuckle Up. Friend of Knuckle Up. His brother's been on, had been on the show, so I'm trying Well, to if it was a team. donation to a friend, don't begrudge it. You know, in the Bible, they talk about if you're going to give, you should be a hilarious giver. But I'm not such a hilarious giver in this instance. I'm, man. What next steps do you think Nate should get uh, should engage in for uh, uh, the next fight. If oh, you mean Diaz? Out. I yes. thought you were talking about the one standing next to you there. Uh, <laughs> I was going to suggest he kill himself. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but they, that's all I got. You, you surprised me. I didn't. I had a whole bunch of John Nash insults, and now it's Nate. I don't have any Nate insults ready, so I got to dig the bottom just, of the barrel. Just, now, we still Diaz, have the rest of the show. Yeah, D, Nate, Nate Diaz. I, 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 he made completely the right move. And now he's they're saying he's like, I'm not going to fight anywhere but the UFC. Yeah, but you did form this fight organization under which you could do an MMA match. Why, why, why go back to the, you know, to the, to the. He wants to fight Connor. Yeah. Oh, right. Ah, uh, yeah. I see. Okay. Well, he could do an MMA match under his own rubric with, uh, with Jake Paul, and then go back. Except and Jake fight. Paul signed to PFL. Ah, mm. that's, that's, so there you go. So they, they, these these are bumps in the road. But realistically speaking. Dude doesn't need another nickel at this point. Uh, he's almost 40. Yeah. He lives in Stockton. I got to tell you, he's set. Mm. So you're not uh, being set, but not living in Stockton. Eugene, step in the shoes of Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> uh, With Elon Musk blaming a bad neck for his inability <laughs> to fight. Yeah, it's like, I, I, I would fight you with my neck. The doctor. I kick your, I kick your ass. I kick your ass if this neck wasn't hurting so much. I have children to think about. Uh, with Elon Musk blaming a bad neck and his inability to fight, while you're in your prime now, walk us through your fight options. One, wait for Elon. Two, pick a fight with another tech bro. Or three, Jake Paul. Oh no 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 no! I go I'd go Cannon Briggs on it, you know. Let's go, champ. Let's go. At this point now, I, everything out of my mouth would be taunting Musk. I'd be making fun of his companies. I'd be making fun of his wives and ex-wives. I would st I'd be making fun of his kids. I would be making fun of his penis. I would be making fun of his companies. I would just say, uh, I would taunt and taunt and follow. I would show up, I'd buy some of his stock so I could show up at the stockholders meeting and say, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Zuckerberg. Bark, 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 bark. Well, I don't understand the question, Mr. Buck. Why don't you ask Musk what I just said? It's chicken. He understands chicken. I would just dig down deep, and I would do it all the while going to jujitsu until the guy, as a point of pride, had to come out and, 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 and fight me. And at some point through back channels, you know, Musk is going to probably say, hey, bro, come on. This, you know, this was just fun and games. And then I would print up his text or his emails or his, his DMs and say, look at, look at this. Look at this nut juggler. And I would just be relentless. Because, you know, it, it all accrues to his benefit. Yeah. It all accrues to his benefit. We love him more today than we did yesterday, purely as a result of him being the anti-Musk. Mm. What's your take, Nate? It's hard to muster up any care over this kayfabe. I mean, they've milked it for weeks now, and, and it was always just a hand job that was never going to go anywhere. So I, I really don't care. I mean, you know, Zuckerberg is really into this UFC thing. He's partnered with the UFC. They're going to do a virtual reality UFC and meta. The, he's got his blue belt. He's got a cage in his backyard. Musk clearly couldn't care less and is old and has injuries. The whole thing is just silliness, and I wish it would go away. I wish they'd all go away, in fact. Hey, you know who has old, who's old and has injuries? Me. You know but who's you train seven fight? days a week. 
who who's it yeah. who's 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 ready, willing and able to fight Zuckerberg now? Me. Mm. He's not gonna take that match, I can tell you. Yeah, he's a, he's making a mistake. I get I get confused I get confused easily. He might win. <laughs> Senility is encroaching, and we've noticed, but it's probably not enough to help him. Mm. Uh, what would help the heel turn, Nate? The heel turn, man. I I haven't quite parsed all this out, but Barstool Sports seems to have gotten chewed up and thrown away by Penn and ESPN uh, because Penn Entertainment wants you know is making their money on gambling and they have disassociated themselves from barstool sports apparently because barstool's brand of right-wing confrontationalism is too controversial for the people regulating the gambling industry when your politics keep you out of the gambling industry some would say it's time for a a little self-examination others would say i can i'm buying my company back and we're just going to keep doing what we're doing so you know I feel a certain amount of sympathy for Mr. Portnoy, except for the hundreds of millions of dollars that have accrued uh, in, in his path. But just, I mean, as a business owner who's trying to speak freely and, and has found his options to profit off said free speech limited. But yeah, now I'm actually trying not to enjoy this too much mm. for the most part. And um, who is this, uh, Misty F. Eugene? I, I don't know how many bar fights you've been into, but if you've been in a bar fight or if you've seen a bar fight, and I used to be a bouncer, I've seen a lot of these, there's inevitably that point where the, the line stepper has stepped over the line. Everybody else realizes it, but they don't realize it, right? Mm. So the guy is like, yeah, you motherfucker, I, blah, blah, blah. and at some point, you know, the person who will end up being the one fir- to strike the first blow, you can see them get this look in their face like, I've had about enough of this guy. And then the guy steps over that line, that last final line. Then it's bing, bang, boom. Then I'm taking them both out, throwing them out into the streets, and then the night goes on. So you know, you, you have people. They don't know. They don't. There was a girl I went with to high, high school, and she had an interesting name. Her parents decided to torment the entire world by adding an extra vowel to the name, so that like a name that you, most people would read as Laura, is suddenly pronounced Laura. Okay, Ooh. so every time the teacher's taking attendance, teacher says, you know, La- Laura, so she goes, yes, Laura, Laura. We would have to do this again and again and again. At a certain point, you could see the class turned against her and they all begin to hate her. We are sidelining this every fucking day because your parents like vows. Fuck you. The same is happening to the person who's misty as fuck this week. You complained and you complained and you talked and you talked and you made this an essential part of your brand. Yeah, no, I'm, this is how God made me. I'm big boned, I'm BBW, I'm accepted myself, I exercise, I make my dancers eat bananas out of each other's coochies, I fire them, I make them sell NDAs, don't you understand? And the rest of the world says, you know what? How about enough of you? Yep. How about enough of you? You brought up the weight. We didn't bring up the yep. weight. You brought it up. You've been talking about it for five years. And guess what? La, 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 la. We're done with you. And it, as evidenced by the people abandoning her on social media, which is where she lives. I don't know anybody who's seen her live, specifically Lizzo, who I'm talking Thank about. You. Um, Nate seen her live? I, I saw it South by Southwest, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's what you said. So, so, um, you know, yeah, she's, I think, misty as fuck at this point. It, this is a very delicate calculus. It, it, if you live by social media, you will most assuredly die of social media. If you've got a nice organic following, you know, then, then whatever, you're fine. You can still play county fairs or some such, but this is going to be, you know, we, the, Clearly, I was never a big, big fan. She was on the Carlos Watson show, and I had to edit the manuscript for it. And I was like, incredibly, I was just outside of the weight. I, yeah, we got it. There was mm. nothing there. There was no there there. So um, she plays the flute pretty well. Yeah, and there's a joke there that I'm not going to touch. But yes, yeah, <laughs> there's a, the flute. I'm sure she probably plays that. She should have followed our advice that we gave last week. And, and the saxophone, and, you know. <laughs> the bonafone. 
<laughs> the sousaphone. You know, I think uh, the, the, the funny the thing. The rusty trombone. I think the thing with Lizzo is interesting because there was some article. I think it was in the, the Atlantic, and they're talking about, like, oh, you know, why people are not political anymore, and it's because you know you get. If you're political and you're trying to not be political, people will judge you because you're political. And the people they were talking about in the article were individuals who were just jerks about their politics and about, and about what they stood for. And yep. I think Lizzo is in the same kind of category. When you have an individual who goes, instead of like an Adele or a Susan Boyle or somebody who's like, hey, you know what? I'm not your stereotypical, traditional a pop star singer, mm. right? I'm mm. me, and this is who I am, right? Mm. But mm. for Lizzo to constantly dwell on, dwell on, dwell on, and getting to a point in which it's like, hey, you're at kids' events and you're twerking. Okay, no one wants to see that, right? You're at certain things yeah. and like, oh, your whole brand is, I'm obnoxious. I'm the obnoxious person in the room. Mm. And mm. so what happens is people just have to they take it for a while. Initially, it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Like you did, Nate, when you saw her on stage. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And then mm. when it's all about how obnoxious this person is with their agenda over and over and over and over and over again. It's like, okay, so finally when there's a little sliver of a downfall, like everyone goes all in for it because like, you know what? Yeah. You had to put up with this stuff for so long. You kept on dragging our faces. You made it so that you could not be criticized without hey, hey, the hey, attention hey, I, being, I, you know. I got a question for you. Are you going to keep saying everything I just said? Are you throwing shit at the host? Is that what it is? Never I been am. Done I'm, a, I, I, I'm wild. I'm swinging at everybody now. Yeah, mm. you just said what I just said. Well, <laughs> what, <are> you, <laughs> what he just said what was. Said. <laughs> Jeez. Ah, oh, Eugene. Well, see, it's in, in stereo, I guess. I've been drinking, man. What can I say? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> day drinking. Day I, drinking. I, I, a day I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm going to the riverside after this in my, oh, my <laughs> the river, get up myself on a riverboat. No, no, she, that's what I'm saying. She crossed the line. It's a bar fight again. It's like, fuck, fuck we had about enough of you. Stop it with this. Yes. Look, you know, what is that? What is that Dylan line uh, to live outside the law? You must be honest. You know, you know, the people who treat their people well. Yeah, you do. Because we never hear about it. Mm. <laughs> never hear about it. Because they're paying those fuckers off like crazy. And those people, like, if it was a tough day at work, that's okay. Or drowning got... them in Martha's Vineyard. Correct. Oh, no, <laughs> but it's... thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there's, there's that too. So thank you for joining us. Contribute our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the shoes fit. Follow us on Twitter, Agnes Robinson, at Alexio, Kid Nate. Please give us a thumbs up, Eugene. Ah, thumbs up. Ah, oh, I got it. Buy seven secret sources of inspiration. <laughs> Look at oh, there we go. There we Harsh. go. Okay. It was the teeth, right? The went well. Yeah. Yeah. See, the oh, thing wait. is, I expected to sober up by the eight o'clock show. So mm. you guys tri tricked me. There you go. What are you pimping, Nate? <laughs> bloody elbow, bloody elbow, bloody elbow, baby. And what are you yeah. strutting down the block, Eugene? Well, um, I've been doing interviews all day today before the drinking because uh, of the actually having a chance to s put some uh, sunlight between uh, Love's Holiday and the memoir. I've got a lot more interviews to do to do press. And uh, this was a, actually a, a fairly the, the, the interviews about the uh, memoir, because these are people who are reading the memoir are actually pretty cool and pretty fun. And and though uh, and, and it gives me the opportunity to kind of to fill it out as to why I stopped with the creation of Oxbow in a way that is nice and comfortable and teasy. So that's what I've been doing. And so I'm still pretty excited about the memoir, which is now October 12th. Mm. And uh, he knows, uh, I think you'd like me to repeat this, wouldn't you? He knows who ordered and who didn't. Yeah, I do. Right. So I can tell. make sure you're on, so, you know, on the list, yeah, you know, yeah, even though I did yeah. order, you see the treatment I got, so uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> I got a review copy. I haven't read yet, so but I will. I will. Oh. oh, and I will book you, and we will talk about the book. On oh, the good. Yeah, that's uh, well. The thing is, at one point, the guy and this was a very buttoned-down guy because you know it's book people, and uh, the guy at one point I started to say, I forgot that I was on like another show, right? I'm like, hey. Uh, 
So I was at the slave auction, right? The guy, the guy goes, what? I said, yeah, yeah, I was at the slave auction. And I was being filleted by my partner at the slave auction. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. And I just go, oh, I shouldn't have told that story. You know, and so it was, it was, it was, it was great. I mean, this is the temptation when you deal with really straight people just to like, you know, push stuff off the table. So there you go. <laughs> Until next week, no matter how tight, loose, or uncomfortable, remember these words on this show, the shoes always fit so we can never acquit.